Right, this radio arrived. I bought it on eBay for I think it's about twenty-two dollars or something. Broken knob on the front. It looks like it's got a uh, Nico talkback board in there for that. Um, because obviously it's not a rigid. Knobs look mismatched, mismatched, and not on properly. Um, it does actually transmit. So it's doing five watts right now and X off frequency, but. It is actually working. Um, channel display, you can see that is actually okay. Also, the switch is a little bit dirty, but it works. So, I just need to pull this thing apart, see what's going on there. Replace that knob and um, realign it, convert it to these inner channels. And uh, so here we go. It's a little bit tatty, but uh, it was a good price, so. Um, worth it I suppose if, if a shot it was actually sold as not or not working in it but it is so cool right radio's opened up let's have a look in here um a bit of tape on this board here which isn't stuck down anywhere and the board's rubbling around look, over the place screws loose on the side brackets it's fairly solid but it's moving slightly it's screwed not bolted and it's not very good and it's down here it's supposed to be sold onto that can there I think um, and it's not. This doesn't have any audio on transmit at the moment, so I've got to check out why. I believe it's probably related to that um, dynamite control, which is broken off the front panel there. Um, yeah, that works. So yes, I shall carry on with this and see where we go. That looks a bit dodgy having a wire wrapped around the capacitor there. So that, that's not very good. Short out something. Yes, so we'll see how we go. Right, I'm going to start off with uh, doing the basic alignment thing because that often shows you what's wrong with the radio by things not being tuned properly and stuff like that. I pulled that board out, get out of the way. Um, the there, the microphone socket has got the wire going to it there. So that could be related to why there's no audio, it could be this board has got a fault, or it's incorrectly wired or something, so I need to trace that down later on. But I'm just going to start off with doing a basic frequency alignment. Um, so, lot two on these particular chassis is as I've instead of measuring the 10.24 directly, I actually measure the 5.12 megahertz output on the PLL. That way it doesn't load down the crystal and give a false reading. This is getting 5.12. So that is actually showing me that frequency is bang on. Alright, so that crystal just here is fine. That alignment there is correct. So I don't need to mess around with that at all. Um, which means the TX frequency should be pretty close. Um, yeah, I might just go through do a TX alignment before I do much else. We'll see. But it does seem to be off frequency though, but even though I'm getting a correct reading there, so there could be some problem somewhere. Right, to try and diagnose this no audio problem, I've hooked up my other oscilloscope, which has got a built in wave generator. So I've got that set at 1 kilohertz and 40 millivolts peak to peak, which is ample, which I've hooked up directly to the back of the mic going control um, or dynamite as they call it in here which is they say broken off so this will be eliminating this modification board as the cause so i have got to transmit well, I'll just get on wave gen on first turn that on that's active transmit it there we go audio turn that back off no audio so yep yeah, the actual radio is working but the modification board isn't Right, just to confirm, I got my wave generator here and I hooked it up to the can I see this pop it up the center pin of the mic gain control which comes out of that modification board just to rule out the pot as a button and sure enough I had no audio. So the pot is what the problem is here, it's broken. So this could be this modification board actually works okay. 
but because the pot's now inside, it won't work. So I've replaced that. Right, I've replaced that pot in front, and I actually had a spare knob which matched the first two. So that knob there, that one there, that one there, all the same. Um, this one here is different. It's got a slot, a little notch in there instead of a slot on there for some reason. That's a modification board, and this one here is also one of the original ones, although it's slightly different also, so it's a bit strange. I seem to have three different styles of knobs on this radio. Obviously it's been messed with a lot in its life. It's quite an old one. It's got the old the 2816 instead of the 29 Limited as in the new ones. It's the same chip, just different markings. Right. Um, so that's replaced. I've tested it. And it works. So all good. Right, I'm just going to set the VCO on the bands to make sure it can cover because it switches VCO frequencies between RX and TX. So I'm just going to measure the voltage. So just there, there's a last point right near that resistor. And I'm getting 4.84 volts. There you go. And that's from channel 1 on New Zealand, which is the highest voltage it will generate on that's received. So what I need to do is adjust that voltage down because it's too high. It's a little trick here, I've got to try and hold the probe and turn the pot and hold the camera at the same time. But, uh, let's see if we can do it. Come on, here we go. Right, this needs to be usually around 3 volts or so. It works best. So that's there. And let's have a listen. Yep, yeah, okay. And now we've got a test time. Receiver's not aligned yet, I haven't got that far. There should be an S9 signal. It's way off right now. So, but at least it's receiving. Now, VCO voltage, I need to also make sure it's correct on the highest channel. Which is channel 40. I'm going to switch it to transmit mode so I don't burn my TS gear out. And now, let me measure that again. And see what we get with the mic. If I can hold all three things at once. So it's currently saying 1.87, that's in receive, and transmit that goes higher. So let's see if we can actually capture that. Right, here we go. Oh, feedback. 1.6. Right. So that's actually okay. Let's set to the limit. So the VCO is set. That's good enough. Now to finish the alignment. Right, I've already just received, tuned up the receiver. Unfortunately, I didn't record it. I should have done. So that's sitting on S9 now. I've already adjusted the um, various pots, so, well, coils. So these are the receiver coils here. So not to do that a bit. So that's receiver, that's receiver, that's receiver, that's receiver, that's receiver. That's receiver, as RAF there. Okay. Um, don't mistakenly adjust that one. That is a 10.24 MHz crystal tuner. There's a crystal down there. That's the transmit one. This is the tripler, which triples the 5.12 uh, MHz uh, frequency, which comes out the POL, um, to do, create the 15.36 uh, MHz frequency, which is then mixed in with the mixer here to create the FCC band. These are transmit ones, that's the VCO, which I've adjusted, I've got a VCO of that here. Um, those are transmit ones here. That slug has already been taken out of there. Often they're taken out because they seem to perform better without slugs actually being removed. Um, usually that's where the adjustment just works, so that's already been gone. And otherwise we're right. Um, AMC pot is right there. I did actually have a little bit of tape underneath it stopping it from connecting. So it's basically disabling the AMC, so I've re-enabled that. Um, but as you can see, it's turned wide at the moment. I've actually adjusted it because, unfortunately, my Marconi piece of test gear here, which I repaired not long ago, has died again. Um, it's got some kind of fault, so I can't actually do the modulation tests at the moment until I've repaired that as well. So that's just a bit inconvenient, but here we go. So um, when I adjusted the receiver, I should mention that, I've adjusted it here. Um, so it's set minus 67 dBm right now, which is for the setting the S9 signal. Um, I 
did actually need to set the level at, at minus 100 dBm, which is great for my sensitive signal, which is what you need when you try to tune it. Otherwise, the AGC can kick in and give you a false tuning because it actually reduces the signal when it gets stronger. So the next thing I want to do is just confirm the receiver sensitivity. So definitely make sure everything's all turned definitely up. And I just want to confirm that the was an ADA receives with a suitable sensitivity. So I'm going to come up here. I'm going to set this now to one at minus 110 dB. Have a look. Yep, you can still hear it, and there's still a signal there. Just see there. Right, so I turn up a bit more. Yeah, set to minus 105 dB. Yep, still there. Just minus 120 dB. Gone. So, minus 120 dB is the limit for this radio. Um, 115 was there, but um, let's do 117. Yeah, 117 is there. Minus 118. Yeah, minus 118 dB is the limit for this radio. Right there, it's dropping off. It's just about gone. But that's pretty much alright. That, that's acceptable levels. I'm kind of used to seeing that kind of level on the radio, so that looks alright. Um, Oh, now I've done nicely the alignment, so I've just got to still set the IMC. The transmitter is working nicely though. Um, let's just have a little look. Switch over to transmit. Um, and there you go. One, two. Yeah, so right. So, yeah, it's doing fine. Um, frequency is close enough, it's not bang on, it's about 200 hertz high. Um, unfortunately it's not adjustable on this unit I put in here, um, there's no adjustment on it, it's a fixed value so you get what you get, um, but it's with it, it's an AM, it's not like sideband or something where it's going to be perfect, so on this one here it looks fine. Anyway, um, next thing I need to do is to sort this ugly mod board out, um, it is mounted but the mount is not pretty, it wobbles around, it's just yeah, it needs to be secured properly and mounted, it doesn't flop around inside the radio and we'll go from there then, just about done. 